Hello everyone and welcome. Casey here with Modern Witch Doctor. So today I am going to go over the reasons it is that I am not vegan. Now, over the past 10 to 20 years, veganism and vegetarianism has a really gained popularity and there's many people choosing to follow this new lifestyle. Now, although I am not against what other people choose to be, and I absolutely can recognize that sometimes choosing a plant-based diet can be beneficial for health, um, there are many reasons why it is that I personally choose not to be vegan. Now, to start with, many vegans and vegetarians' beliefs are based around the spiritual aspect that they do not want to take the life of an animal or consume the flesh of an animal because this animal is alive and it has a spirit and it's just really, really mean to do this. Now, the way that I was raised, the way that my family taught me, is that everything has a spirit, okay? So this grass behind me, is alive with a spirit. This creek that I am in front of is alive with a spirit. This tree next to me is alive with a spirit. So the way that I grew up is that our whole world is alive with spirits. Now, if we're going to look at this from a spiritual aspect, then anything that you consume is alive with a spiritual essence. So to take a life of a plant is no different than to take the life of an animal. Now, I have had vegans say to me, well, that's not true because plants can grow back. And, you know, as soon as you pluck a vegetable, another one will come. Well, this also is the same concept if we look at the natural world around us. So a great example, 90% of the time when somebody is to take the life of a deer, for instance, you are to go hunting and you take a life, Chances are that deer has had plenty of chances, plenty of babies, and done its part to procreate, to make sure that its genetic um, physical body is passed on to provide, once again, the necessary aspects that it gives to the natural world to continue. This is the same concept as when you pull a plant, it's going to come back. It is the same concept. Now, if we look at the world around us, veganism is really only possible in large cities. When you live um, side by side with the natural world, veganism is impossible, um, especially people that do not live on the equator. Living on the equator would be the only possible way to really um, sustain yourself with fruits and vegetables. Now, another aspect of this that a lot of people fail to take into consideration is the fact that, okay, yes, buffalo, cows, um, you know, monkeys, gorillas, all of these things eat plants and they're large creatures. Yes, this is very true. And they do get all the protein and all the sustainability that they need to survive. Well, here's the difference. These animals eat all day long. In order for a human to survive off of nothing but plants, you have to consume a lot of plants. Now, of course, if you're eating things such as potatoes and possibly even corn, but these things, once again, are not um, going to be the nutritional sustainability that your body needs to continue. Now, animals contain B12. This is a very essential vitamin for human beings. Vegans and most vegetarians have to take supplements of B12. So for once again, if we're looking at this from a natural standpoint, if this diet is so wonderful for you, why is it that you have to supplement it with supplements? Now, a good theory behind this is another item on our planet that does contain B12 is soil. However, human beings today wash away all the soil. We do not eat um, an apple or, or eat a potato with the dirt on it. And this actually is what our ancient ancestors did. So any tribes or people that had a mainly plant-based diet were gaining this B12 from the soil. 
Now today, our soil, because of sprays, no-tills, genetically modified plants, and so on, have stripped most of the earth soil of this vital B12. So once again, this is why a lot of vegans have to take this supplement. But if we're looking at this from a natural standpoint, how is this natural? Now, as I was saying about the spiritual aspect behind this, um, you know, viewing this as you don't want to harm anything and things of this sort, it goes into balance and our relationship with the planet. And I will tell you a little story. Um, a few years ago, I was, um, I actually am a holistic uh, practitioner, so I've studied nutrition and um, holistic ways of healing for many, many years. And I had reached out to one of my elders and I said, you know, I'm really thinking about maybe switching to um, a vegetarian diet that I've been studying and reading a lot about the health benefits. My elder looked at me and he said, dead in my face, he said, so you think you are above creation? You think that you are too good to consume what creator Tonkashila has given you? You think that the lion feels bad when it eats the antelope? No, the lion is grateful for its gift. And actually, so is the antelope because it is fulfilling its purpose as a food source. This is why animals such as deer, antelope, um, trying to think other wild game that we eat come, you know, they're in abundance. They breed in abundance. And once again, this is to sustain the natural environment for what it needs. Now, I will bring up the, um, the health aspect of this. So speaking of the health aspect, I've had a lot of vegans say, you know, well, this is far healthier. And if we look at cancer patients, for instance, um, there's, there's a lot of information on people that have been diagnosed with cancer that then switch to these um, raw vegan or vegetarian diets and their illnesses seem to disappear. So it's always correlated with, oh, well, they don't, don't eat meat anymore and that's why they got better. But if we really take a close look at the lifestyle that the person was living prior to them getting cancer, 99.9% .9 of the time, we're going to find that that person had a high diet of processed foods. They had a high diet of sugar. They were consuming a lot of unnatural um, substances, which of course, it is not rocket science Then when you cut out these processed foods and these unnatural substances that you're going to gain good health. So I think a lot of times um, people that are buying into the aspect that it has all these health benefits are not really seeing the full picture behind why it is that it's helping. So, you know, if we look at once again, uh, prehistoric tribes or ancient tribes throughout the entire world. Now, most people think of, for instance, Native Americans, oh, they all ate buffalo and they ate deer and they ate turkey. Well, in reality, many tribes um, did not consume as much meat as people think. They had an absolutely well-balanced diet of corn, um, a lot of squash, a lot of beans. Now, meat was also consumed, however, but it was not as easy to obtain as, let's say, growing or um, agriculture. But if we look at this, once again, from a scientific standpoint, we find that once again, they had a well-balanced diet of fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and lean meat. These people were not consuming processed foods, sugar, McDonald's, Burger King, all the crap that our world eats today. So, and many, many, especially Native Americans, lived into very old age. We have many documentation that a lot of them lived past 100. So if we're going to use eating meat as a damnation to our health, um, it does not hold weight in science. Now, once again, if we look at the natural world around us, veganism is only possible in cities. Unless you live literally in a hot climate where you are able to grow an abundance, because once again, abundance is what it takes to survive off of plants, it is physically impossible. Now, once again, 
We have animals and creatures such as buffalo and gorillas and these sorts of animals that are eating all day long in order to consume enough nutrients and protein and carbs from these plants to sustain themselves. As us as humans, if we were to do the same thing, we would get nothing done. We would have to literally eat huge abundances of food to acquire these um, nutritional benefits. Now, one aspect I would like to bring up is the pandemic, okay? So after this pandemic happened, this was kind of a wake up call to many people because the stores and grocery stores were virtually out of everything. Now, if somebody is a vegan or vegetarian, let's just say it's dead of the winter, you have a few canned vegetables on your shelves to survive, no meat and no grocery store. How do you think you will live? Once again, if we look at the world around us, when you live balanced and side by side with nature, veganism is impossible. It is hard to acquire the calories that you need to sustain yourself um, just eating dandelions and greens. Um, it is biologically impossible. Now, once again, to look at this from the spiritual standpoint, okay, I understand that the new woke awakening um, fad or following that everybody is kind of doing and everything is on conscious levels and oh we are consciously above animals and we we should know better a lot of you are forgetting that we are also we are spiritual beings and we do have this this um divine consciousness but we are also biologically animals we are connected to mother earth physically we are no different than any other creature that resides here with us. So for us to think that we are above it is a very vain concept and something that really is going to slap a lot of these people in the face when reality or some other severe situation happens. Now, once again, if let's just say another pandemic happens, unless you you know, have stockpiles of canned goods and fruits and vegetables that are only going to stay good for a few weeks, you're not going to survive. There is not enough calories in uh, canned goods and things of that sort to sustain you physically. Now, all of this stuff, of course, is, um, you know, my personal opinions. Now, some of the things I spoke about is backed up with science. And as with anything in life, okay, we are always going to find alternative theories and research to back up that belief. And I'll give a good example. This would be fluoride. Um, there is a lot of controversy with fluoride. I personally do not use fluoride. I have pretty teeth. Um, but anyway, so you are going to find government funded uh, websites that are going to talk about fluoride is excellent for your teeth and it's vital and we need it and blah, blah, blah. And this is why people had poor teeth in history. But then you're going to find independent studies and research that is going to be the opposite. So what it really boils down to is that inner consciousness, that inner spirit, listening to your intuition and using your own judgment to make an assumption. Sometimes it is good to read the research and make your own decision. So, you know, I, I just really wanted to voice this opinion because, like I said, I got a lot of negative feedback for being this horrible, horrible person for killing a quail. And I think a lot of these people that were bashing me for killing this quail don't realize how many plants they kill daily, how many spirits they consume daily by eating these plants and thinking, oh, well, that's just a plant. It has no life. So if you're going to be a higher consciousness person, you need to be on that higher consciousness level. You need to understand that this hoop of life we live in is a spiritual atmosphere. Everything is alive. And it was put here for all of us, the whole inhabitants of Mother Earth to utilize. This is how our hoop continues. Now, if you choose to be vegan, I have nothing against that. I don't bash vegans. I don't go and tell them they need to eat meat. 
I actually don't even say anything because I'm that type of person. That's not my business. We can all choose to live our lives as we wish. And that is a really big lesson that many people need to learn today. It is not our business. What somebody else does, who cares? Let them do it. Okay. And if I want to kill quail and I want to raise my own meat birds and I want to hunt a deer, that's my choice. I live side by side by nature. I forage for my food. I hunt for my food. I raise my food. And you know what else? I'm very grateful for my food. Just in my video that I did the other day, every time we took one of those quail's life, we smudged, we saged, we thanked it. From the bottom of our heart, we thanked it because showing your gratitude, we, we are grateful for this, the sacrifice that this animal is making to then sustain my life. And just as one day I will die and my body will then be consumed by these plants and it will help to sustain their life. And this is a really, really um, concept or, or belief that I have truly in my heart. And I think that a lot of people need to not be so judgmental on the fact that we eat meat. Now, let's face it, the world we're living in, this is becoming a bigger and bigger thing. We're finding fake meat. We're finding processed foods, um, even when it's coming to veganism. So a lot of these people that are preaching to the choir to me are the same ones buying a bean burger out of a box in a grocery store. And if you only knew how unhealthy that truly is, you'd be better off eating meat. Now, one more thing I would like to add. I have also had a lot of children lately that don't understand this concept. You will have the younger generation give you crap about eating or killing a chicken, yet they will go home and have their mommy make them chicken nuggets. Now, I blame parents. I blame parents for not explaining to your children the way that the natural world works. And sometimes it is cruel. Yes, nature can be very cruel. And once again, only the strong survive in nature. And this is the way that the food chain works. Now, if we are not explaining to our children where food comes from, what kind of world are we going to be living in in a hundred years? We have children believing that, you know, what comes out of a box is okay and to take a chicken's life is not okay. Now, many people that are against killing animals still eat meat yet they let somebody else do the dirty work for them. They go to the grocery store and they buy the pig and the cow and they go home and they eat it and then they bitch and complain to somebody like me for taking an animal's life. Now, in my um, belief with this, these animals that are farm raised, when these are big production companies, you think these animals are living happy, healthy lives? No, most of the time they are not. And they do die in horrific manners because they know what is coming. They have their babies ripped away from them. They see the horror in the other one's eyes as it is that they're being processed. Now, yes, this, this is very sad. And I don't believe that any animal should die in this manner. When we raise food or we raise animals for food, they are treated with the utmost respect. They are loved and cared for. And when it does come time to process them, they don't know what's happening. They don't know what hit them, basically. So this is the same concept. If you're going to preach to the choir about um, not wanting to eat meat, go harvest wild meat. In my opinion, that is a far better thing to do than to purchase it at the grocery store. Raise your own animals. Um, you know, a deer, for instance, a deer lives its life happy, wild, and free to the moment that a bow or a bullet takes it out. It dies quick. It does not die in pain. It does not know what is happening, um, or most of the time. Occasionally, you'll have a hunter with a bow and the deer will take off. But aside from that, it's, it is a better quality of life for this meat that we are consuming. So if you are looking at this from a conscious aspect, once again, to consume the energy and the negative energy in how an animal died is even worse than taking the life yourself. Because at least you know that that animal was given the respect that it should have been given before its life was taken. So I really just, you know, I'm sure I'm going to get some negative feedback from this and that's okay. I'm not asking anybody to live my life, but I'll tell you what, I live my life. And I'll be damned if I'll have anybody else tell me how to live it. 
So until next time, guys, stay wild.